Okay. Even half. Uh, okay, now I need to switch to English. Sorry about that. <laughs> but my colleagues are here, and they are slightly better with Chinese, if necessary. So first of all, I'm really, really happy to be here. Really excited to be here. This is my name. It's a Finnish name. But what's your friend line, run? <laughs> so it's a little bit difficult name. You can call me Mark or Marco. Anything else? You can just say, hey, you. <laughs> it's also fine. Please ask questions. So this is supposed to be a technical session. So sorry about the suit. I'm not a suit. I'm a technical guy. I'm a techie. I was just presenting in the big room and then better to have a suit. So I'm a technology evangelist at Amazon Web Services. So I'm by heart a developer and a system administrator. And today we would like to show you what we call from Git, Git to production. So basically Amazon Web Services in action. I will just show you a couple of slides. This is not death by PowerPoint. I show you a couple of slides, and then it's live demos after that. So let's hope it works. So the idea, what we would like to show you, is how to go into production from an idea into application in production as fast as possible. So basically, you have an idea, but it's not that easy to have a reliable, scalable production system after that. Traditionally, people spend about 70% of the time managing systems like storage systems, firewalls, load balancers, operating systems, databases, configuring them, then you don't have enough capacity, then the server breaks. So it's a lot of hassle. You would like to focus on your application. That's what you're making. Your main job is not working in the data center. That's just necessary evil. So with Amazon Elastic Beanstalk, which is one of the services in AWS Cloud, you can really speed up deployment and management of your application in the cloud. It lets you focus on the coding and everything else, what we call undifferentiated heavy lifting, can be left to the system or the cloud. So you can shorten the time you go from idea to running application in production. You get full admin access on everything, so it's not even though it's abstracting the underlying layers, it's not limiting what you can do. All root access, all admin access, on all the resources, like virtual machines, etc. So it works like this. This is the idea that you have different versions of your application. You code them, of course, on your laptop probably. You can drop them, the applications, in the Elastic Beanstalk, and then you can run them. And you can have different environments. So this could be a testing environment, which is small and cheap. So very small instances, not so much CPU memory. It's enough for testing and development. Maybe not highly available. You don't need a high available system in testing. You don't care. It's very unlikely the VMware, VM, not VMware, virtual machine disappears. In the AWS cloud, you don't need a highly reliable, highly available development system. However, your production system in AWS, Amazon Web Services Cloud, that must be highly available, right? That has to be scalable so that it handles the traffic that's coming in. So your production system would be bigger with high availability. You want to use different programming languages. So the Amazon Elastic Beanstalk does not limit what languages you use. Well, currently we support these, and we will be supporting more containers based on the customer and user needs. So this is the simple idea. You make an application, you drop it into Amazon Elastic Beanstalk, and then the Beanstalk system handles all the low levels of the stack. So the host, the hardware configuration, operating system, runtime environment, web servers, application servers, all of those are automatically deployed, configured, managed, security configured, etc. by the system. You just make the application. So when you run your application in Beanstalk, you can have them, the system automatically configure load balancing, auto scaling groups to handle big loads, running EC2 virtual machines in the AWS cloud. And everything is done automatically by Beanstalk. You focus on the application development. And then you get a C name, so host name, where you can point your traffic. 
It's very easy. The log files and application versions are stored in S3, Amazon Simple Storage Service, or storage for the internet. It's an object store, highly durable, 11 nines of durability. And then, of course, you need to have agile development cycles, like agile sprints, right? You want to have really rapid development and testing cycles. And now today I will show you running Git. So let's move to the live demo now. And by the way, there's a free tier. A really nice way to start is to by using the free tier. So you can try Elastic Beanstalk absolutely free with the small micro instances. So here we are in the AWS cloud. Now I click AWS Amazon Elastic Beanstalk. And I have already something running here. So I have deployed already my first Elastic Beanstalk application. And it's green. I click on that. You can see it's happy. It's running. It's running node.js. So this is one application environment now. This is a sample application with node.js. Here is the URL. If I click on that, now we're actually using the application. So congratulations. This is our first Elastic Beanstalk node.js application. That's fine. So it's running in production. And this one, this one's configuration is highly available. So I have already deployed this earlier, last night, and I configured it to be auto-scaling with load balancing. But let's do one from scratch. So I go to my source directory. Let me make this a bit bigger so that you guys can see. Yep. Let's go to PHP. There's a Hello World application. <laughs> So the point of this application is not how cool it is the application. This is a crappy application. It's, <laughs> <laughs> it's three lines of code. This is about the level of coding I'm able to do these days. Hello world. And I have already added this to Git. So if we ask Git, what is the status of this? This directory here, right? Well, we are on the branch master, everything is fine. But this hello world application is not yet here in Elastic Beanstalk. It's not here yet. So let's actually let's keep it in the background there just a second. Let's keep this in the background and keep the code here so we can see. We go to Beanstalk there. Let's add this in Git. From Git to Amazon Elastic Beanstalk. We have a command called EB, Elastic Beanstalk. It's a command line tool you can download from the AWS website. EB in it. Let's initialize this code, this application, this crappy hello world, in Elastic Beanstalk. I have already entered my access key and secret key for my account in a config file. Let's deploy this to the Singapore region, which is quite near. What is the application name? Well, hello world, yes, that's fine. Hello world environment. Here I could put testing, staging, or production, for example. I could make different environments. Now, what is the solution stack we want to run? You can see here different choices, Ruby, Tomcats, Pythons, Node.js. So I will choose the second one, 64-bit latest Ruby version, as the container. OK, do we want load balanced or single instance? To start with, I say single instance. This is not a development and testing environment. No high availability, so it's cheaper. Do we want a relational database? In this case, I say no. I don't need it for this application, but if you say yes, the system will automatically deploy and manage a MySQL for you. That's it. It's so easy. Now, this is an identity and access management profile for security settings. So if you want to have granular access control, I just say default, default access control profile here. IAM is something I recommend in production then that you can give your users and developers different access. Who can start, who can create, who can delete resources in the cloud. OK, now the init is done. Let's run status now. Hello world environment is not running. So let's start it. EB start. Now I could do this from the web console, but I know that most of the developers prefer command line, right? So that's why I'm using the command line. <laughs> Especially because you are supposed to be, OK, do you want the latest git commit? Yes, please. Because you want to be DevOps, right? So you need to automate things. 
you need to have, you want to have continuous integration, continuous deployment, at least continuous integration. So you want to automate things. That's why using the command line or the API calls, you can automate things from your build, testing, and production pipelines. So now you can see that I executed the command Elastic Beanstalk start. So first I initialized the application. I registered it in Elastic Beanstalk, and then I said start. Now it's creating the environment. And you can see now here, in the background, in the web GUI, something has appeared. Hello world environment has appeared. I didn't click anything on this web GUI here because I'm running the command line in the, in the other window. It's now automatically creating the application as a new hosted application in Amazon Elastic Beanstalk. Its status is currently gray, so it's not working. If I click on the application, you can see that the status is actually launching. So it's launching. And you can see Git mentioned here. So a Git version, the latest version in my Git, is now being deployed here. And what you see further down below is that, well, based on the command line actions, they're running here. The same information is on the website visible in the console. Create environment, created security group, so automatically provisioned firewalls for this application, created Elastic IP. This is where the traffic will go. The Elastic IP will also have a host name. So C name, it will have an elastic load balancer if this is a highly available environment. So now currently this is not a highly available environment. Now this is a single virtual machine for development and testing using the micro instance, so very cheap. However, if you want to go to production, I will show you that later, time allowing, and we will modify this single instance to a highly available cluster. Then you have load balancing on top. So now it's doing stuff. Let's look at my EC2 console. So I start another tab in the browser. And let's go to the EC2, which is the Elastic Compute Cloud. And I click on Instances. We should have here maybe the Hello World already visible, because it's being created automatically. So these are the virtual machines I'm running in the AWS Cloud. Yes, Hello World environment has already been created, and it's being initialized. The status checks for that instance are now running. So this is a new virtual machine that was just now created. When I executed the git and elastic beanstalk commands on the command line. So now we go back to the command line. We are waiting for the EC2 instances to launch. While this is happening, we are creating the environment. Let's do something fun with the first environment. The first environment was this, or is this, Elastic Beanstalk application with Node.js, just a sample application. So if I click on this URL again, you can see that this is the Node.js Elastic Beanstalk application. Let's attack this guy. What do I mean? This one, so there are two ones, right? The Hello World, I'm now deploying from scratch. We did that on the command line. The second one, my first Beanstalk application is this Node.js application. This one is a load balanced and auto scaling application. I have done some settings changes here. For example, on the load balancing, you can configure the load balancer. This is the highly available environment. I've set the health check interval very aggressive, very short. And I've set the monitoring interval to one minute, quite short. So I've told the system to aggressively scale up or actually out if there's traffic. Now there's no traffic to this system because nobody's using it, right? However, what we could do, so look, 2.3% CPU, CPU. Let's start bees with machine guns. So we need another terminal window. And we want to log into bees with machine guns. Where is bees with machine guns? Here's the bee master. Bees with machine guns is a really funny open source load testing tool for AWS environment. Let's log into the Bees master. So I'm running this virtual machine with the Bee master. I select connect. And with my own SSH client, I need to copy this command. So I want to SSH into the instance running the Bee master. There. 
Now we are SSHing into the Beamaster. Oh. It's better to log in as the EC2 user the rather than root. It's a good security pra best practice, EC2 user. There. Now we are logged into that AWS virtual machine running the Beamaster. Let's start the bees. So there's a simple script here. Now I'm calling up 10 bees. What is bees with machine guns? <laughs> this is bees with machine guns. Now that's a bee, and he has a machine gun, and his job is to attack websites. So now I'm starting 10 bees with machine guns. Let's see what's happening on my EC2 window here. So I executed the command bees up. And look, all of a sudden, we have more virtual machines, more instances here that are initializing. There are 10 bees. <laughs> so this command started or created 10 micro instances with the B software on them from a certain AMI machine image. And now those bees are getting ready to attack. So the total will be 10. When the bees are ready, we will attack. But what are we going to attack? Let's test the autoscaling. So this is the URL to this Node.js application. I copy the URL into the clipboard. And then bees are ready. Now we have 10 bees ready. Bees attack. <laughs> bees, please attack my Node.js load balance, load balance and autoscaling application. Go, go bees, go. <laughs> so now all of the bees, oop, bees are a little bit lazy now. Okay, each of the bees are going to fire 10,000 rounds, <laughs> 250 HTTP requests at a time. Bang, 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 bang. Now they are shooting. What are they shooting? They are shooting HTTP GET requests. And now, what is happening here? Let's look at the monitoring. Let's change the monitoring to five minute granularity and refresh here. Pretty soon we should see, ah, you can already see CPU utilization starts going up. Network utilization starts going up. So we leave the bees attacking this website for a while. So this is a load balanced, highly available environment now, right? Let's take a look at the other guy in the meantime. So the attack is happening. We will come back to the attack soon. In the meantime, the hello world environment is now running. So based on the command line, we have now created and launched into production, basically, this crappy Hello World application. Application is available. Let's see, EB status, Elastic Beanstalk status. Ready and green. Is it really working? Let's click on this URL. And it's, it's correct because it's slash hello world.php. There. <laughs> so we put this into production, right? And you can see version zero. This, this uh, session here is called from Git to production. So let's edit VI Hello World. Let's change this to version one. There. Git at Git commit text version one. File changed. And then Git AWS.push. Let's push straight from Git, the new version of the application into production. So I changed the string from V0 to V1. What is happening? EP status. Updating. The application is updating. Let's go back to the Elastic Beanstalk here. Let's look at Hello World. You can see that the status is updating. Now, Git has just downloaded the new version of the code. It has uploaded it to Elastic Beanstalk. The Elastic Beanstalk platform has changed the code on the virtual machine, in the container, in the web server, and it's restarting. You can also have a no downtime restart. If you have two environments, you can change the C name 
you can point the traffic to A to B easily. Or if you have a load balance cluster, which is recommended for production, you have multiple virtual machines, it's going to update them one at a time. And when it restarts one, the load balancer sees that, hey, this guy's restarting, no more traffic for that guy. So the load balancer makes sure that traffic is only going to alive instances. So it's one at a time updating. The only time when you really have a downtime is in this testing environment, when you have one virtual machine, and that's now restarting the code. But that's fine in testing and development, not fine in production. Okay, now it's finished. Remember, we changed the code. Let's look at the code again. We changed the code to v1. Let's click on the URL of the Hello World application again. I always forget hello world.php. And v1. Yay. So, <laughs> so we made a Git-based production update of our application. Now, what is happening to the bees? Bees are firing. Bang, bang, bang. Let's look at this guy, this Node.js application. Aha, look here. Added EC2 instance to autoscaling group. Added instance to environment. Let's look at EC2. Let's refresh here. So the system has added a virtual machine. They are the bees, they are a bee. <laughs> and we have a new virtual machine coming up. So we have had an autoscaling trigger. Autoscaling has detected that there's a big load on the application and it's automatically now there. It created a second one. They are called default environment. So if I do this, actually we have three of them. We have now three instances. It keeps adding instances to serve, to be able to handle the traffic. Let's look at the load balancer. So in EC2 you can see the load balancer. You click on the load balancer. This was automatically created for this application by Elastic Beanstalk. Now this load balancer has three instances and you can see that they are split to different availability zones. Because there are now three, one of them is in 1B availability zone, one is in 1, 2R in 1A. Highly available across, distributed across multiple availability zones. They are still saying out of service. The reason is that they are being health checked by the load balancer. So health, the load balancer is going to try a couple of times and then when it says yes, you can configure how many times, you can configure what to check. When the checks are happy, then the load balancer is going to put these instances into production. And that's coming very soon. Let's look at the monitoring. What does this look like now? We started the bees. CPU load is 100% now. So our application, look, all the graphs are going up. Requests are increasing, increasing, increasing. But look, what happened to latency? First, the latency went, to, went up. We started the bees. They started attacking this website. Latency went up because this one instance was having trouble. Was, oh, I need help, help. Then, based on the monitoring, the system has now already triggered two new virtual machines to join this application cluster automatically to handle the load. And the latency is going down. So we are scaling up the system automatically. You have also scaling down, of course. So once we stop the bees, I can now stop the bees. This my B script is a bit crappy. I just need to kill it. I have so crappy code here, see. Now, I, and then I execute bees down. Calling off the swarm, stood down 10 bees. So now I stop the attack. So after a few minutes, based on your load balancing configuration that you can do, the system, Elastic Beanstalk, will automatically start removing instances to save money. So we are right-sizing the number of EC2 instances based on the traffic. So we started with one, and we ended up actually with four. So in the meantime, it had added three more instances. So currently it's running four instances in an autoscaling group because we attacked with the bees. Now I stop the traffic. A few minutes after this, you will have just one left anymore to save money. So this is autoscaling. So I think we are out of time now. So <laughs> You saw me do a really crappy application, Hello World, three lines. We changed the code. We used Git to push the new application version into production. 
We had another system already configured as a load balanced, highly available environment. We attacked that with the bees, and we saw the auto scaling add more resources to survive the load. When the load is over, it will remove the resources to save you money. Thank you. Um, 各位，呃，对于刚才 Mark 的那个 Elastic Beanstalk 这个 demo， 有没有什么问题想问的？因为我们时间还有哦，后面。好。啊 ，I would like to know, uh, if, um, for example, I used Java standard web, uh, uh, uh and compiled to Wall. Yeah. And can I do similar things with the JIT integration? Absolutely, absolutely, no problem. So uh, 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 our script will compile it to, to compile our app to to a WAR file and using a GEB command to to upload it. You can do that, or you can go straight from Eclipse also. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you want, yeah, okay. You, we have an integration from Eclipse straight into Elastic Beanstalk. Okay, thank you. Good question. Any more? Have you other questions? Do you guys like it? Is it cool? Not cool? <laughs> uh, sorry. Uh, uh, I, w I want to ask if, if the system can separate the, somebody may want to attack your uh, site or it's the real user come to your site. Because if somebody are doing some, something like DDoS, yeah. you will keep scaling my system. And uh -huh, no, no. Maybe the cost will. Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. So I have to reply with a couple of different different scenarios. So the first one is that you set the limits. So for your auto scaling, I can show you here. It doesn't take long. And we go back to Beanstalk while I actually it's here. Go to configuration. Go to auto scaling rules. So this is the auto scaling rules that I set for this application. There is a maximum here. Minimum is one. In production I would put minimum at least two, right? But then you have a maximum. You set the limit so it doesn't scale to 15,000 instances if you don't want. But that's not perfect yet. I know your real question. What about the DDoS attack? AWS is a massive cloud, right? We, have, we are investing a lot of resources into security. Security is the AWS number one priority. We have automated DDoS detection and prevention and isolation. So if somebody is doing a DDoS attack, our cloud will automatically detect it and start preventive measures, and it will isolate the attack. So we will protect you automatically from DDoS. But when it's real traffic, you want to scale so that you can serve your customers. Good question. Uh, can I integrate this process, uh, deploy process into uh, my CI uh, system? For example, Jenkins, or do you have any uh, Jenkins uh, uh, plugin? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, many people do that. And that's a really good best practice to use something like Jenkins as the build, build system with version control, yeah. And Git is not the only one. You can use Subversion or Merc Mercurial or whatever you want for your, for your version control. This is fully open. You have the web GUI, you have this command line, and you also have APIs. You choose which one you want to use as the commands to use Elastic Beanstalk. Um, do, do we get any add-ons on this, such as um, HTTP or SMTP services on this? Or we get the root access to this and we have to do it ourselves? You have root access. We have the containers which have normal services like Apache. You can choose Apache, Nginx, or we have different application environments for Ruby, Node.js, whatever. But you can always add stuff, right? So for example, you can pass parameters to the images when they start, called user data. You could pass there a Puppet or Chef or Ansible script. So you could, if you want, you can orchestrate. So you spin up the default machine, but you could orchestrate more packages and configuration using something like Chef or Puppet, if you want. And you can make your own AMIs as well. You can pre-package them as images. You have the choice. Could you consult any fast way to migrate our company Terra Beta data to your the, the Amazon service. Hmm, that's a good question. Maybe some of my colleagues can have have you been involved in this kind of example? Uh, 
，这是第一，首先我们有提供类似那种叫啊、呃、AWS Import Service， 这个是。啊、呃，我们可以派人过来把你们呃一个硬碟哦寄到我们 data center 那边啊，做这个大量的数据的那个传送哈、哦，这个是第一个哈、哦。第二个就是嗯，我们也有比如说有些是啊、呃、开源的一些啊啊、呃、solution， 像有一个我不知道你们有,有听过呃 UDP 海啸这个 protocol， 这个也是嗯、呃、利用那个 UDP 的那个 protocol。去大量传送一些资料到云端这样 ，OK， 嗯，还有就是其他一些，比如说做那种啊、呃、，WAN optimization 一些解决方案都有提供的，只是有好多办法，就看你希望用哪一种这样 ，OK。Uh, if the traffic s are coming from a different available zone. Will the auto scaling instance fire up in the nearby available zone? Well, the rule for auto scaling is you can also set the rules, but the recommended best practice is that you use all of the availability zones. So, actually, now the Elastic Load Balancer supports proxy protocol. So, in your application, you can see the source IPs. If it's HTTP traffic, there's X forwarded for. If it's TCP traffic, we have this proxy pro protocol. You can still see the original IP address of the client. You can do decisions on your client side. But for the elastic load balancer, the normal rule is that an auto scaling is to start instances in all the availability zones. This is the best practice to keep your application running in case there's an availability zone level disturbance. And you can see where the traffic is coming from. Okay. Uh, no other questions. Uh, I have heard some information about that ELB can't scale down or can't gratefully scale down. It will just cut down the connection. You want me to take this? Um, this is not yet. This function you just mentioned is not yet coming. This is in the roadmap. Yes, yes. If you want it, it will cut it down. 就，所以我们建议就是你把那个 session 的那些资料不要抽出来，就是从那个 web 跟 app 你这个 tier 哦，把它抽出来，放在一些比如说啊、呃、资料库啊，或者是一些类似那种 memcached 的那种啊、呃、方法 ，OK， 这样就可以了。对，只要不要放在那个 web tier 就可以。那等到等到我们出那个那个东西出来以后呢，就 OK 了 ，OK。By the way, I just want to show one thing. Thank you. I'm showing you that now that I stopped the bees, I stopped the attack, the system is automatically scaling down. So it started to remove the extra virtual machines to save cost because the attack is over. The traffic is back to zero now. Okay. 我先补充 Mark 那个，这是那个很重要的一点，就是我们那个 auto scale 这个功能啊，不是说只能啊扩哈，它还还这是可以缩的哈，缩很重要。缩的意思说，这是帮你们省钱，就是啊，如果不需要的资源，我们就不应该发。所以 auto scale 不管是可以啊扩，也可以缩哈，所以这个很重要。所以 Mark 很就是要强调这个这点哈 ，OK。I think time is probably up now. Okay. okay, any more questions? We probably, the session time is over. We have until three more minutes. Oh, we have. Okay, yeah. some more questions, if anybody yeah. has. A couple of more minutes. About, huh? Yoma? No, okay. Oh. When does the sign turn red? It's turn. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it's green. <laughs> That's a very good question. So let me show you when the sign turns red. So, 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 that's the default environment. So that's the Node.js. So look here. The, uh, it's called the default environment. So that's the Node.js. We go to the instances here, default. And oh, there's one more running. So auto scaling has now terminated all the extra instances, but there's one running anymore, right? We are back to one instance. And I select here, terminate. I manually kill. Oh. Or would you kill this one? Or you yes. just stop the Node.js no, no service? Yeah, we could do that. We yeah. could SSH into the yeah. thing, and we could stop the web server, whatever. 
Now I'm manually killing this guy. So now even the remaining virtual machine is going down. It's registered in the elastic load balancer as one of them here. Instances, this is the load balancer. Load balancer sees that there's only one there, but we are now killing that one. Remember there's monitoring, it's now turned yellow. Oh, uh oh, something is happening. So yellow means that some health checks have started to fail. And if we keep this page here for a while, it will actually turn red then. And then it will turn green again. Because, because <laughs> Elastic Beanstalk <laughs> notices the problem and it will automatically add back an instance. Um, <laughs> 补充一下,其实它都不会死的,原因是因为我们那个,它用了那个AutoScale,AutoScale那个功能它因为它,你刚才Marku有给你们看,就是它有 AutoScale一开始它有几台那个EC2Server的嘛,这是minima,然后顶多是多少台,这是maxima。因为它有minima这个原因,如果说它如果真的没有机器活着在那边的话,它一定会帮你再起多一台,所以维持原账,所以它都